Star Gathering, <clears throat> annual Star Gathering, and because of this wonderful um, opportunity that we have for a sacred cause, that we have rescheduled that, um, uh, canceled that Star Gathering, and we're going to have it next year, but we're going to have a summit, and Yvonne is going to speak on, this, uh, on that summit. And the reason why I asked Yvonne to be on our Zoom cafe as well as to join us for the uh, star gathering is many of you know my beloved teacher, Christina Rose. And much of the stuff that she told me long ago, I never believed. And one of the things <laughs> that she talked about was walk ins and star beings. And um, but she, but I loved her soul. I loved Christina. So I would go like, I don't believe anything you're saying, but I love you so very much, Christina Rose. <laughs> and we became long time uh, friendships as well as a teacher to me. And, um, and so I asked Yvonne to come to the Star Gathering as well as on Zoom with us um, because of the walk-in. So I'm just going to tell you a little bit, and then she can tell you a little bit about herself as well, and I'll just hand it over to you, Yvonne. Okay. Yvonne Perry is an author, a coach, a life coach activator, workshop facilitator. She is a star seed who has had multiple walk-ins in experiences, including three soul exchanges. She is a practitioner of light codes. She offers one-to-one -one coaching as well as healing and activation sessions using light language. And where are you, um, where are you zooming in right there from? I am, yeah, I'm a little bit south of Nashville, Tennessee. Ta uh, Tennessee. So, okay, I am going to pass this over to you, Yvonne. And if you want to tell them a little bit more about yourself, um, the only other thing that I want to tell everybody is long ago, Christina Rose took me to a uh, it was literally called an international walk in convention. And I just thought I was just going to walk in. <laughs> I thought it was literally, I'm going to walk into this convention. And to meet fabulous, fabulous, and I did, I met fabulous, fabulous, fabulous teachers and helpers and uh, friendships that have been, um, uh, been very, very long in my life. And Yvonne, uh, um, you took that over for a while, didn't you, Yvonne? The I Walk did. International? I was actually a friend of Faith Vinoli, who was in that group. And she was holding the LLC when uh, she fell ill and succumbed to cancer. And I, at the time, she held the LLC in Colorado. So I really didn't have any other choice about getting it started back up under that particular organizational head. But I have continued to work with people who were in that group and people who have found us through the books I've written and through their own research um, and through other people who are in that organization. We continue to have a Facebook presence in a private group where we share our experiences and ask questions and his uh yeah we're i know i hope you would love to continue to have some more gatherings like that and i would certainly want to be in that i, I definitely enjoy that kind of fellowship yeah um i think that we talked yvonne i i one of the things that i had on my pure hope show was a woman who i met 30 years ago in egypt actually yes. and um have not seen her since but we've stayed connected and um she had talked about the experience of the walk-in um international groups and and this is what she said because i said so why do you think they were so comfortable and why do you think they were so holy and one of the things she said on the Pure Hope show was that when you're in a place where you do not need to constrict or restrict the fact of who you are, then you allow all the expansiveness of who you are to just be expanded. And you don't have to pretend to be anybody else than who you are in that expanded energy. And that goes out into the world. And so that's what we're trying to do, Yvonne, at the Hope Interfaith Center in this, that's why it's called the Interfaith Center. And that's why we started the Stark Gathering Convention. And, um, and that's why I'm interested in doing the We International again. Um, mm -hmm. so, 
So I'm just going to let you talk a little bit because some people are new. They don't understand what a walk-in is. They don't. And I would ask everybody just to be open-minded. You can be like me, like, oh, I like this person. I don't really do <laughs> I'm um, later, but <laughs> sounds good. <laughs> That's who I am. So, so take it away, Yvonne, if you want to talk a little bit about walk-ins and soul yeah. exchanges and uh, what's happening maybe on the planet right now. Yeah, well, a lot of the fun and exciting things are happening amid what we would view as chaos. I love the way you said it, Hope, as the opportunity to take a sacred pause where we're able to really reflect on what's important to us individually and in our families and in our career. What is it we're really seeking? And I think that as we begin to seek more and more our own connection with source and we are refining the quirks in our personality that feel a little out of alignment, we are accelerating the energy within ourselves and creating like a triangle of body and spirit and personality. A lot of times we forget that the personality is part of this experience and that we could not have this diverse experience on earth as spirit and body if we didn't have the challenges presented to us through the personality or the ego, the inner child, whatever, whatever part of us that we normally push down and say, oh, that's shadow <clears throat> side, I'm not going to look at that. But when we begin to really uh, not fall prey to what everybody else wants of us. And like you were saying, when we can really be ourselves and we can be authentic, a shift begins to occur within us. And many times that shift causes us to jump timelines. If you kind of envision it being circles, maybe around the earth, concentric rings around the earth and where we're able to go up in consciousness and expand outward and upward uh, in our vibrational level, there may be some times when a portion of the spirit that was not formally able to get into the body decides to join us. And it comes to walk along or maybe even walk in the body or maybe even swap places with the incarnation that started this uh, journey as a baby. So a lot of different kinds of walk-ins. Um, some of them are like that, they're the upgrades the bringing in of consciousness from higher realms that is us. And then there are some times when it feels like the shift is so huge and so great. It's like the personality just completely swapped. Our interests are different. We want to move to a different location. We don't feel resonant with any of the people in our lives. And these walk-ins are what we refer to as a soul exchange or spirit exchange where you're actually bringing in a different component of spirit that's maybe um, such a vast vibrational difference from where you are now till it actually feels like there's another soul that has walked in and taken place of the first soul. That's a little confusing, but I bet a lot of people here have had some similar experiences where suddenly your life just changed. Maybe it wasn't suddenly. Maybe it progressed over years. I know there were some times with me in 98, 99, where I was in and out. It was like, one day I'm this person, and one day I'm that. One day I like this, and one, I want to be married. No, I don't want to be married. I like him. No, I hate him. It is back and forth and back and forth as it fluctuated until it finally came in and started what we call the integration process. Process. And all of us are integrating more spirit into our bodies at this time and bringing that personality or that unloved side of ourselves into resonance with spirit and body for this unification process that we're going through. And I guess if you wanted to just ask questions or comments, um, we could kind of keep the conversation going in that thread. Yeah, I would love that. Um, so are these contractual exchanges, which means when we're in heaven, when we're with our council, when we're with our angels, are these contractual? Like, do we come in and say, we will have a soul exchange or we will have a soul expansion or, mm -hmm. so are they contractual right now? Yeah, I think that a lot of them are, some of them are almost like a, um, an intervention. Like it, when in my situation, I was at the point where I didn't want to be on earth anymore. And I was ready to just take the body out so I can go home. 
those kinds, I think many times are just like, whoa, 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 wait a minute. And they swoop in and they're going to save the body, carry on the ministry, uh, whatever you've said in, in flow at that time, we'll come on, we'll take that. We'll, we'll finish this. Con you know, they may change it and shift it around a whole lot, but that, that contract may not have been there. There may have been a backup just in case things get too hard. Um, and if you want to call that a contract, then the soul begins to cry out for it. And they know that that's the time that our teams are going to begin to work with the shift. You know, when you bring in these higher energies, sometimes the body's not ready for what's going to happen. They're, the body is not in resonance with the higher frequency that you're bringing in. And so the body needs some catch up time. It needs some time to rest and relax. And I had a friend um, who was going through a, a walk in when she was at my house last, was it December, January? Of this year and she was just in such a state of flux she would i asked her so what are you going to do today and she said it depends on who shows up in the body i mean mm -hmm. she was in that kind of flux um but she was really embodying more and more of that and while she had this great level of peace about what was happening there was at the same time a lot of questions like why don't i feel like myself or who am i or uh, what happened? Why do I feel so different? I mean, she moved from one state to the other. She stopped by my house on the way just to kind of like help me, <laughs> and, you know, to, to calm her down and to work with her vibration and help bring the body up to the level uh, that the that the vibration of the new essence was coming in so that her body was not uh, damaged through this. So a lot of plug-ins have to happen. And that's one thing that I work with the, the walk-ins. Uh, in the integration is bringing the body up to a resonant speed that can um, that can co cohesively integrate with the energy, the energy of the body, the energy of the uh, spirit, as well as working with what the personality has already got going and how are we going to incorporate that into this lifetime because um, you're going to have some conflict. <laughs> Anytime you bring in more of that high energy, uh, something's going to have to move out of the way. And, and that's anything that's not serving the light, anything that's not aligned with your true self, that authentic version of yourself, it's going to start shifting. And I, I bet just about everybody here has felt some kind of shifting in that regard, whether it was a walk-in or whatever you call it, you have probably felt some kind of shifting where you didn't feel like you're the same person that you used to be. I look mm -hmm. at who I was 10 years ago and it's like, that's not even <laughs> who I am now. <laughs> I don't yeah. recognize that one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my poor husband. He's had that a lot. Eileen, do you have a question? You have to put yourself off mute and then you can ask a question. Okay, there. Yep. Okay, it's Ellen. Ellen, Ellen. okay. Ellen. Yeah. Um, what, what I hear you saying, um, what's the difference between that and being possessed? Oh, that's a good question. I was wondering if that was going to come up. Well, we talked about contracts before where we actually have a partnership and you're going to take the body for so many years and then I'll come in or there's a backup and when it gets too tough, I'll come in and take over. Well, the possession thing is when there's uh, beings that didn't cross over that are seeking a body, don't want to wait for the incarnation. A lot of personality in that um, energy field and they're just looking anywhere to attach. And they're not worried about your best interest. They want what they want. They have their own agenda. That's a possession versus a contracted or agreed upon. This is a mutual benefit to all of us. That kind of, that's the difference, I guess, in a walk-in and a possession. So that's a higher essence of ourselves then mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and not another entity. Right. Okay. Well, it, I guess it could be another soul. What do you think, Janice? Hope? Well... You know, after all these years, the jury's still out. I, I, yeah. <laughs> I think that for me, um, how I feel that, because I've had all those things that you've just talked about, of feeling like, um, who am I? You know, I, I, I woke up one day thinking, who am I? This is not the life I want to live. I'm I want to live a deeper, more holy, more spiritual life. And I, and I did feel a presence, an energy, literally come into my body. Yes. And, and I didn't know if I wanted to stay married and all that stuff. So I consider it a higher resonance of my true and most holy self. 
So mm. for me, I don't know if I see it as a soul exchange, like one soul goes out. I see it as a vibratory, um, fiber optics. Uh, <laughs> I'm just connecting somehow. My mm -hmm. DNA is connecting to my higher mm. self is coming in. Like a higher calling? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and I guess, Ellen, the, the reason some people feel like it could be a possession is because, like I said, when you have more light and more essence coming in more spirit coming in it's going to turn up all this stuff that's been kind of pressed down on the bottom that you know it's kind of settled on the gl glass and now this new energy is coming in and it's going whoa let's stir things up let's find out what's here that doesn't need to be here let's make room for more of this and, you know more people can come to the party if these uh if this furniture's moved out of the way um, so those kind of things can cause some big shifts that uh, result in divorce or leaving a job or uh, making some kind of irrational decisions. I know my family was wondering whether or not I was bipolar because of the way I was shifting back and forth and back and forth. And I think they were about ready to put me somewhere. And that's when I said, okay, um, I need to get divorced now. <laughs> <laughs> So that they don't have any jurisdiction over me because I felt like what was happening to me was divine will. Um, it wasn't something that I was afraid of. It felt really right. And at the same time, really scary. But I think the fear was coming through what everybody else was trying to interject on me um, and try to bring me back to who I was, the little subservient um, person that could be walked all over. And here I was going, hell no, I'm not doing that. Da, da, da. I'm, you know, I'm out of here. And so <laughs> that big change kind of caused them to think something ain't quite right about Yvonne these days. <laughs> yeah, and what I had found, um, Yvonne, when I went to Walk-In International is that everybody was talking about um, uh, what I call a higher consciousness conversation. So when we were together, when walk-ins are together, if you want to call it the higher soul or another higher soul that comes into you, uh, I had gotten to the point where literally a friend told me after I had my first walk-in, she goes, you need to go to Chit Chat 101, Janice. You don't like to Chit Chat anymore. <laughs> and I said, you're right. I don't literally want to chit chat anymore mm -hmm. and so when I had my first walk-in experience all I wanted to um, discuss have a conversation with and uh, how I can make the world a better place and how I can um, and so something like came over me and in me where I literally my 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 food preferences changed my um, uh, I had difficulty at first with my husband, who I'm still married to for 36 years, it's gonna be 36 <laughs> years. Um, he was, he traveled along with me. He knew that I was changing. And the only thing I could tell him is that, all I can tell you is that I feel that more of myself is inside my body. And just like Yvonne, is that I wasn't going to be what he wanted me to be or my society or culture or religion wanted me to be or my parents wanted me to be i felt that with this this entry into who i really was was that i was bound and determined to become who i was meant to be mm -hmm. and i said and um if you think i'm not going to do that and stay with you you're incredibly mistaken because i'm not i'm not going to stay with you and be somebody who i'm not and um so every time i've had an entry and i and what i feel is that i'm a, a um a multiple walk-in i've had three walk-ins one i actually saw and the one that i had where i saw i saw this i was laying in bed with my husband and I saw this, it, it's funny because I saw it coming through my navel. I saw this energy coming out of my navel. And I saw another, uh, it looked like smoke or an essence that came into my navel, came into my navel. And, um, and that happened around three o'clock in the morning. I knew what had happened. <laughs> and I knew what was happening. And the odd and mysterious thing is, is that I had a shaman at the time that I was working with, and she called me at 3.05 in the morning after the entry had taken place. And she was from Tennessee. Her name was Ruby. And I picked up the phone and she said to me, oh, my friend, 
I've been waiting for you to come into your body. Oh, wow. And then I knew, I mean, then I knew something was happening for me mm -hmm. and to me to bring that to, to the world, really bring that to the world. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, Yvonne, Can you start asking for that to happen to you? Oh, Pardon? goodness, no. <laughs> I wasn't. Were you, Janice? What'd she ask? Were you asking for the walk-in to happen? No, I was not asking for the walk-in to happen. I had all of these kids running around my feet and animals and snakes. And I, I did not ask for any of this. I, I did not ask for the Hope Interface Center. I did not, I did not ask for any of it. Um, I was guided. I was guided by the essence of the, the soul that continued to come in and that continues to anchor me and guide me as what am I to do next? What do you want me to do next? Mm -hmm. No, I, I didn't ask for it. My husband certainly didn't ask for it. <laughs> <Thank> <laughs> but you. I kept on saying, just be who, you're not the woman, you know, just like Yvonne said, you're not the woman that I married. And I says, I know I'm not. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. May I please share my walk-in experience? Yes, yes, please okay. do it. Okay, so I know I've had three walk-ins in my life. Um, one when I was 18, when I first like woke up and I, I was sleeping and I had a dream, my soul left my body and it scared the shit out of me. And then, <laughs> and then the new one came in and it was, it was at probably around like three in the morning. And I just knew something, like I was eating new things. I was just like a whole new person came in. And then my second one was when I was hit by a train. I was hit by a train when I was 23 um, and had a near-death experience. And I know, um, and, and every soul I feel like has helped me do my work more and more and helped me um, just my, my purpose becomes more clear after everyone, you know, because it, I feel like they've all been upgrades and, mm -hmm. and things like that. Mm -hmm. And then the one last year I had a conscious walk-in and so I was fully awake for it and for six months leading up to it I had this feeling like I was gonna die like I knew I was I was gonna die and I didn't tell anybody probably until like after my walk-in <laughs> um, because I was like I'm I just knew I was gonna die and it wasn't a fear because I'm not afraid of dying I think it's a beautiful thing um, and then um, it was at, it was right before the star gathering happened on the first day and Hope was right there and Carrie Chapman was there and Amy was there and all of a sudden I just started sweating from head to toe and I was like almost it was like almost like a panic attack and I was like what's happening what's happening and thank God Hope and Carrie and Amy were right there with me but it was the craziest thing to be wide awake when it happened. Um, mm -hmm. And then after it happened, it was amazing. It was so beautiful. And, and, um, and again, like food, eating different foods and just, I just felt like I was a different person, but mm -hmm. um, I just remember like crying afterwards, like just bawling my eyes out because I felt like, like where did where did I go and who is this new person and I like Amy and Hope and I were just they were right next to me when I was crying and I was just like like I was grieving my old self immediately mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. and it it was so beautiful for for my soul to just go through that while I'm awake I thought that was the most beautiful and it feels like a gift it, it was a gift from my soul to witness it while I was mm -hmm. awake. So mm -hmm. I just wanted to share those stories um, with everyone because walk-ins are so beautiful. They're so beautiful. So thank you. I'll mute myself now. Mm -hmm. But thank you for being here, Yvonne. Oh, thank you. Thank you for sharing your story. Mm -hmm. mm. Mm. Um, when I was introducing you on, on your uh, bio, it says multiple walk-in experiences, including three soul exchange. So what is the difference between 
being a multiple walk-in experiences, including three soul exchanges to you? What does that the, mean? The soul exchange is what we were talking about earlier where I wasn't really sure if it was another being. Uh, I mean, we're all connected to source. We're all expressions of the divine. So if I look different in this body than I do in your body, we're still the same. We're yeah. all still source. But it felt like, I guess because the transition was so huge, it felt like something totally different came in. And it was like, what was your name that, that was sharing? You say hope in her faith. Janelle. 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 It felt like what you were saying where you just totally felt different. Everything changed big time. And you, you grieved. You grieved what you had left behind, the, the life you left behind, the, the person that was in the body or that feeling that of, of familiar was gone. Uh, I didn't remember things from my childhood and it, it was kind of scary. There was no internet to look things up in 99. You, there wasn't any information, very, very little information about walk-ins at the time. Uh, there was nobody in my life I could talk to about it. I didn't know what had happened. The best I could come up with was I had died and come back in the same body. And I really couldn't believe that because I was a Christian and I didn't believe in reincarnation. So how could that even be the answer? So there was a wilderness there for, uh, for about three or four years where I didn't know what had happened. Now, the next time it happened, um, it felt like the soul that was in the body in 99 came back for a while. I don't know if any of you have had the, the walk-in experience where it feels like the same traveler came back through for a visit or hmm. came back through for a little while. Um, but I woke up and in the wee hours of the morning feeling like... Um, Where's that jacket I had? The one with the pins on it. Wait a minute. That was in 19. Oh, that was when I lived at Oak Road. That had to been before 1990. What year is it? Where am I? Who am I married to? Am I married? Where? This room doesn't look familiar. Wait a minute. I've been here before. And it was like that going back and forth where I didn't know where I was at, who I was. It's, it's like a dream that you just woke up from, but you didn't wake up. <laughs> <laughs> and then the, the next one uh, that I had was, I guess, not as, it, I've had so many now. It's like they rotate in. I, I know that I work with a, a celestial team of high vibrational beings, and they come in sometimes. It's not just channeling. They actually feel like they embody, and they speak the light language in their language, in their vernacular, in their dialect, and it, it feels and sounds different. There's a big energy shift when that happens, and then that'll lift up, and then another one might come in. Um, usually when I'm working with clients is when I'm feeling these big shifts like this. Are those walk-ins? I guess they are. A new energy walked in, uh, even if it was temporary, even if it's just rotating around um, to serve the highest and best in any situation with any client. It feels like sometimes maybe the guides of a particular client I'm working with stepped into my body, gave the instruction or the codes in like language and then stepped right back out. And I'm just learned to be a placeholder and just allow the body to be this vessel that spirit can work through unhindered. Um, and you know, that, that requires a lot of uh, trust, <laughs> a lot of faith to be able to allow um, that kind of energy to just sweep through your body. Is it different? And I think the idea that I have about us all being one is what keeps that from being so scary. It's like, it's God. It's just a different form of God. It's source. It's just a different way that source sounds right now. Source is speaking a different language. And I don't have to have so much attachment to outcomes and knowing. You just start living from the heart a lot more. Let's talk about purpose, because lots of people who are new to this phenomenon or new to this idea, they will ask me as well as they'll ask other people, you know, um, like, what is the purpose of a walk-in experience? What is a purpose for another soul to come into the body? Mm -hmm. Well, I think that is part of the ascension. What is the purpose of the ascension? It's for us to unify ourselves and come back to the whole. It's about the homecoming. Uh, so if one part of me is done, it's gotten what it needs out of this body and this earth experience, it can go home, but there's no need for this body to die. Bring in another consciousness. Let's do another lifetime without actually having to start over with the baby diapers. 
Let's, let's just pick up from where this one left off and let's consciously move forward and see how far we can take it this time. If that one finishes or has no more need for the body, then maybe there'll be another swap. Mm-hmm. It's all part of the process. And, and it's like everybody that's, that's experienced it says it's a beautiful thing. Yeah. It really is. It's a beautiful thing to get more of yourself, more authentic uh, version, more loving part of yourself into the body and to start experiencing that. Uh, on a daily basis and just noticing those changes. Does anybody else have any questions that they'd like to ask at this time? So it's just another way of evolving then, right? Mm -hmm. Yes, very much so. Okay. Yeah. And with it said like that, it doesn't sound so scary, does it? (laughs) Or unusual. Usually we reincarnate and we start over and we start over. Well, that takes a lot of time. It's like we're living multiple lifetimes in one incarnation these days. I have a question, Yvonne, Mm -hmm. again. um, What are all of the souls doing right now as the world is like standing still and we're just so quiet in our homes and peaceful and pausing? Um, are a lot of people getting walk-ins and upgrades right now, do you think? That's a good question. I don't know. I haven't been in contact with a whole lot of people. <laughs> 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 I know that a lot of people are having shifts right now. Um, people that really didn't even have any interest in spirit right now, I guess maybe has called attention to that part of themselves that they'd been neglecting. Uh, other people are so worried and, you know, this had, it affects all of us on different levels. Like my life has not been changed a whole lot. My daughter's life has been changed more than mine. She's trying to homeschool while working her job at home and her husband is home working his job. You know, their household is a little more upset or topsy-turvy right now. They're managing. They're doing okay with it. Other people have lost their jobs. They have no income. They're going to be homeless if they don't have some income pretty quick. Others are sick and dying or they got family members sick and dying. It affects all of us differently. So it's hard to say what is any one spirit doing but I think all of our teams are loving on us, um, helping us in whatever way, comforting us. And a lot of times our teams do that through other people, like this call to encourage other people to say, yeah, you're having a weird experience, but that doesn't mean there's anything wrong with you. It's just part of the process. We're all going through some strange times right now. Thank you. One of the things that I was talking about with all these women across the world was that we talked about uh, like morphic resonance, you know, and that this has been created as a morphic resonance of a collective of our thoughts and ideas. And I asked one of the teachers online from South Africa, so why do you think that we created this morphic resonance? And I thought it was so interesting. She said, because we are clumsy at our creation. Mm. And I asked her, please tell me more. And she said, because we are not intentional and or deliberate or on what our thoughts are, what our words are, what our feelings are and what our actions. So what, uh, uh, she's a shaman in South Africa, and she said that what is happening on the planet right now is coming from a morphic resonance where we are clumsily creating this. And so I asked her, as we asked each other, so how can we help ourselves as well as we help others uh, to not be as clumsy? And Of course, it's something that we always teach at the Hope Interface Center is to be much more deliberate and intentional and conscious on what that thought is, what that word is, what that feeling is, and what your actions are. And so, of course, they as a collective of the teachers around the world told me that this is helping this, what it, this morphic resonance that's being created right now and the sacred pause, I call it the sacred pause, as Yvonne just said, is to um, check. For me as a teacher, I'm double checking. For me as a teacher and a student of life and student of myself, I'm triple checking. 
how I, how I, how I will not continue to stay clumsy in my creation. Mm -hmm. And we all kind of chuckle because I, we kind of like the word clumsy and, and, and we're all kind of toddlers in some ways as, as you know, we might say that we're awakened and all that, and we're spiritual this and we're spiritual that. But in many ways, we can still be toddlers mm. walking around, bumping our heads because we're not <laughs> practicing how to stay deliberate and conscious. So do you agree with that, Yvonne? Absolutely. That is, I'm writing a book right now and I am, I didn't use the word clumsy, but I do I, maybe manifesting by default because we're not really paying attention of um, what we're doing, but it's going to be on the role of celestial shamanism and, and the walk-in is going to be a part of that um, process to just kind of give us an overall picture of why we're here, what it is that we are really capable of doing. What is the earth experience meant to accomplish? Mm -hmm. And I always tell people to kind of narrow it down. I think sometimes we think too big mm. and, 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 and we think like, well, let's go. Well, well, I am not going to be clumsy on creating <laughs> world peace. And yet we're arguing with their husbands or <laughs> I am going to really concentrate and I'm not going to be clumsy at bringing love and light to the world. And then we look in the mirror and hate ourselves. I mean, mm. I think that I, I what I would encourage people to do, if you really take that in about if this is a resonance from a morphic field that's being created, to bring it on home, to bring it on in, and to not be clumsy in what, how you're creating your, your own reality at this time. Uh, and, I, and as you know, we talked about that a walk-in or a higher sense of self or a cosmic intelligence, or a star being, and we'll talk a little bit about that, I'll ask Yvonne about star seeds, is that we tend to wanna to sharpen the saw. We are constantly wanting to sharpen the saw, so we become much more deliberate, conscious uh, creators of a new reality. Uh, and it is okay for ourselves, as well as it is okay for the rest of the world. So let's talk a little bit, Yvonne, about star seeds, because that was also in your bio that you're a star seed. Many people are kind of new to that, strange to that. What is a star seed or a spatial being that's here upon the planet at this time? Well, yeah, I think all of us are star seeds because our, we did not originate from, I mean, we didn't just grow out of the earth. We came out of something cosmic. We came out of, uh, even our bodies are, our cosmic particles and materials that were made up of uh, the elements, the four elements, air, fire, water, earth, that formed our vessel to be able to house and hold or contain spirit essence. Well, where is spirit? Spirit's in more places than just the earth. Spirit can be out there, it can be in here, it can be in this call. Spirit is everywhere. So if you're a star seed, maybe your spirit first gained its differential properties or qualities from source in another environment other than earth. Maybe it came, you know, from another star system or another planetary system. And that's where you first had your life as consciousness, um, man, not even been a human form. So as a star seed, then when it came time for the earth to begin her ascension process, a lot of us were called in to assist. And this is the first, first time some people have even been in the body. You know, I was talking about my friend who had visited here is having so many shifts. She had one personality that was uh, a being that was coming in that had never been on the planet before. And she was like, just in awe of everything, wanted to touch things, wanted to taste things like a baby, like a toddler. It's like, can't get enough of this. And they were, she was constantly having to say, it's okay, calm down, calm down. You can't drive the car right now. <laughs> because you're new here and you don't know how to do that. Uh, the body has memory of that. And she just wanted to tap in, you know, and just go with it. But um, she, she thought like a child, she was actually in the wonderment stages of a baby that had just been, you know, in exploring the environment. Yeah. So are you getting any information or counsel on if this is a morphic field of uh, resonance? Do you believe, maybe it's hope, I don't know, that people are, are becoming much more conscious and deliberate in their creation? 
I whether do. it is do you i do i mean things i'm reading on facebook and seeing on youtube and um and, and it's not just the leaders that I've always heard of, the ones who are the benchmark of our spiritual communities. These are people that I've never even heard of that are getting it. And they're posting things out there on online. And that to me is very encouraging that it's going to the masses, that the masses are waking up now. It's not just this, our little spiritual community and everybody who thinks like us. I mean, I've got clients now that are coming in from all over the world. Uh, some are doctors with PhDs and, and they have had a walk-in or they've had some mystical experience and they don't know where to look. And so I must be the icon for weird experiences out there on the internet because everybody who's had weird experiences somehow seem to gravitate. Uh, not necessarily that I have all the answers, but that I can uh, transmit a vibration that helps them to just calm down into the feeling state rather than being so called up in the turmoil and the, what's out there. It's like, take that moment and recenter and let's create the positive experience that you want to have because you are a beautiful creator. Um, and so let's be very intentional about that creation. I imagine each of us have been praying similar prayers, but when we don't give it a direction as to how it's going to look, then universe figured it out. And I don't know how much of it's really clumsy or how much of it is just genius. I mean, how did one event cause everybody to stay at home with their family, uh, to eat more healthily, to exercise, to take life slower, uh, to be outside in the fresh air, to not be so possessed with consumerism, for the economy and the systems of the government to be exposed with some of the craziness that they are just putting out there. And you're, you're like, really? <laughs> it's like all of this awareness is coming from this. So it's either clumsiness or it's just brilliance. Yes. Maybe some of both. Yes, <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> So do you think the Illuminati is losing its grip and hold? Yeah, I'm not even sure what the Illuminati is. I know that there are um, beings that are not aligned with the original directives of harm none and for everybody to kind of live in harmony with one another. So I think that the more of us that rise up in our conscious creation, uh, the more that we are going to direct that the entire planet into this higher perspective and, and a purer, more loving experience, there's not gonna be as much place for that to act out. It's just not gonna be acceptable. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. It's interesting, and I think I said this to some of the people who come to the Hope Interface Center and Christina Rose, who brought me to the, my first walk-in international group, she had always say to me, do you know all these channelers and spiritual teachers are always talking about at some point, in, in resonance that the old system and the old, the people who are not holding that higher level of consciousness is gonna have a breakdown and hopefully a breakthrough, but they're gonna break down. And she says, but none of them wants to talk about the metaphysical spiritual teachers who are not really, I mean, they say they're one thing and then they're doing the other behind closed doors. Or like I said, I'm, I'm working to be a deliberate and conscious uh, creator in the Hope Interface Center, and then I come home to my husband, and I don't work at trying to be a conscious and deliberate. So do you see, that, um, I think that it's important to talk about um, discernment mm -hmm. for, of teachers or discernment. Mm -hmm. um, do you want to talk a little bit about that, Yvonne? Well, as far as the, the discernment, I, I mean, it's like, who are you following? Are you going to follow those leaders or are you going to follow your own inner guidance, which is going to always lead you to truth. It's going to always lead you into comfort and peace and love and joy. All the fruit of the spirit will be revealed as you are staying conscious of your own relationship with source. So anytime we give our power away by looking to somebody else to direct us or lead us, um, you know, there's going to be a need for discernment. Um, you know, and I think that's why it's so important for us to really get into our senses, to be able to feel, to intuit and use all of our senses uh, to, to say who is on the right path or who's on a path that I want to be on. It may not be right or wrong. It may just not be the path that's for me. Uh, so, you know, each of us having our own path, maybe we're creating a reality that we want to live in. It may not be like everybody else's. So I don't want to say just um, because somebody else is a, a big leader, a big name in the field of spirituality doesn't mean they have all the answers. I, I know I certainly don't. 
Mm -hmm. But then there are some that come through and, and they just with one sentence, it's like they nailed it. They yeah. got it. Yeah. You know, one sentence. I'm like, I could not have said that better. That was perfect. And I really resonate with that. And I can take that into my being and say, yeah, I can hold on to that. That will be, that'll be a mantra for me. Mm -hmm. That really did resonate. Um, but if I was really concerned with pleasing that person or being part of their, their group or being one of their, having them to be my group, my guru, then I would be forced to give up that guidance that was leading me in order to follow theirs. And I think that's where we've gotten ourselves into such messes to begin with yes. following religions that somebody else passed down to us without any kind of questioning as to whether or not it resonated with our truth. I know I was raised in church from the time I was two weeks old. I was dedicated to the Lord by my, my parents um, and they were doing what they thought was right at the time. And they raised me in the church, but there came to a certain point when I was around 40 years old that it didn't work anymore. None of that really resonated with me anymore. And I went on this path of finding who am I without all this stuff, without all these rules and regulations and things that I have to hold to and things that I have to believe. What am I aside from all of that? I think that that's kind of what we talked about as a group today because they talked about um, lots of the teachings are an interpretation of an interpretation and then they get the information and then they interpret that information mm -hmm. and then they interpret. Mm -hmm. So we're all getting interpretations mm -hmm. of something that started with an interpretation of the Bible or interpretation of this. And uh, it was a, the teacher from England who said that uh, it's very interesting when people were uh, all up in arms about not being able to go into church. Mm. And then she kept on saying, this is all for people to go into church within themselves. This temple. They're, yeah. They're <laughs> and so she found it as a teacher um, in England, how um, that people were very upset about, oh, we can't uh, come together in church. And she said, again, in this gives us, uh, again, whether it's a clumsy or, or genius creation that we are creating right now, that, that we can go into our own church. And so she kind of chuckled and laughed, and I love her accent because she's from England. And she just kept on saying that she found it quite interesting to see everybody upset because they couldn't get to church. 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 And she says, and her whole teaching was turn inward and go into your church mm -hmm. and find mm -hmm. your own truth and live your own truth and feel your own truth. And, and um, you know, I'm, into this book untamed and, and she talks about um sinking sink in sit low sit still mm -hmm. inside your own soul mm -hmm. go to go to holy communion and come until you find your knowingness mm -hmm. sit there until you find your own knowingness and live through that knowingness. And I think that's the exciting time right now where we won't need a whole bunch of spiritual teachers anymore. Right, right. Because we become our own spiritual teacher as we sit in, sink low into our own soul right now. And this is what, that's what I find fantastic over this clumsy or unique or genius creation that we had. And so I tell everybody, don't waste this precious time of uh, doing, doing, doing. The, the other thing we talked about is um, how a lot of us, um, oh, having a desperate need to flee from the moment. Mm -hmm. Having a desperate need to flee from this sacred moment. Because everybody, when are things going to get back to normal? When am I going to be able to get back to work? When am I going to be able to go to the parks? When am I going to be able to go to the bars? Or, and that it's interesting when, and, and again, another teacher, we were talking about the desperate need to flee from the moment means to a desperate moment to flee from ourselves. And mm -hmm. that's how sacred mm -hmm. this moment is right now. Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. how sacred this moment is. 
And so what are you doing, Yvonne, to sink in, sink low into your own soul at this time? To not I, yeah, I have found that I have been sleeping and resting a lot more than I usually do. Sleeping 10, 12 hours at a, at a stretch. I don't normally do that. I'm usually up and down through the night. and You know, it might, might get a seven or eight hour in every now and then, but I've just really been relaxing into that. I feel like I'm receiving some some upgrades and downloads during this time. I've also uh, working on a book that I had put off for years that I've been working on kind of gathering material here and there. And it was just like in a folder somewhere. It's like, well, you don't really have anything else you have to be doing right now. Get that book back out and let's start to working with that. And, and as I open the book, I find myself feeling excitement and joy as I'm bringing that down. And I think if I had done that amidst all of the other busy stuff, it would have been a chore. It would have been a have to do. Whereas now it is a get to do. I have time for, um, and, and it's just, I mean, it's coming forth and it's just, you know, from the, from my heart and hopefully it's going to be a blessing to everybody. <laughs> you know, it's, it's moving along. Um, gardening. I've not been able to get out and get any plants. I actually ordered some on Amazon <laughs> just so that I could get my hands in the dirt. I just love gardening. And, um, I, I actually live close to my daughter within 30 minutes. And so we have been like um, quarantine buddies. They haven't gone anywhere out um, without the precautions and things like that. And they've not gone out as a family at all. Um, so I've been to their house and they've been to my house. And so I'm enjoying spending some time with my grandchildren. And we built a mud kitchen under my back deck and they've been playing in the mud and the way too chilly weather for that. <laughs> But I've just enjoyed sitting out there in the sunshine and watching them make mud pies. And um, it's, it's just walking around the block. And even if you can't talk to your neighbors up close, you can <laughs> across the street is kind of staying in touch like that and doing some calls here. I'm still seeing my clients. So that keeps me in touch with uh, what other people are going through. <laughs> um, how did your family um, take it at, when you were doing this multiple walk-in and having this experience of your oversoul and your cosmic self come into your expanded self? How did, how did, how did your family handle it and are they handling it? Well, I think that they have always kind of viewed me as being the different one in the family. Um, yeah. even, even when I was in the church, I was still way out there on the edge. <laughs> standing by myself and going, Ooh, let's do this. Um, but when I had the first walk in it, my daughter was uh, 16 years old and I was divorcing her father through this um, event. And there was a time when I was trying to get her to do something that I, I knew that she needed to do. And she's very self-directed and does not like anybody else telling her what to do. And she just looked at me and says, I don't have to mind you. You are not my mom. <laughs> I'm like, how did she know that? How did she know that? But she could sense the energetic difference and no longer associated me being her mom. Um, my, like I was telling you earlier, my, my husband at the time was feeling like I needed to be put somewhere. Like I needed to go to a recovery place or whatever, and, you know, kind of get my marbles back in the, in the same pot. But uh, yeah, and my mom, um, I've talked to her about it in a little bit. And mom's not the one that really discusses a lot of spiritual things, although she's a very um, spiritual person and carries a lot of depth. She's not really been just asking questions about it. Every now and then she'll kind of go, well, what are you doing today with your clients? Or, or you know, how's your book coming along? She knows I'm writing a book. And uh, <laughs> they, they just kind of like let me do my own thing. And I love them dearly and they can stay in their belief systems if that's what serves them. And then I don't have a right to take that privilege from them. And, uh, you know, we're just kind of living and let be mm -hmm. not really. I mean, there was a time when I had uh, my brother's uh, son that called me a necromancer because I wrote a book about, you know, working with uh, the spirits of the deceased and what have you. So I'm like, well, I'm, who was it here on the call that saying they were very interested in death? They weren't afraid of death, and it was kind of intriguing to them. I've always had that kind of curiosity about death, and so I got a, kind of a, a, <laughs> a bad rap for that. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, I guess I've, if anything, I would have to say this has been a positive influence on them. Mm -hmm. I'm not trying to preach it to anybody. I'm not trying to force that on anybody or make them believe that. 
it was more like if they ask and I shared, they probably got more than they were expecting and a whole lot to chew over for the next week without me really having to say your, your beliefs are you know wrong because they're not. If, if they believe that and that works for them, I was there. I know it can work for people. I mean, anything can be a catalyst to bring us into our own heart space and into our own relationship with God. It can also be a distraction, so. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because my husband would never say he's a walk-in, but I, he, had to stay, he had to be a walk-in in order to stay with me. And I, again, same thing, I, I don't need him to proclaim that he's a walk-in. I don't need him to understand if he is a walk-in or I'm a walk-in. Um, but, um, you know, I'm very, very um, um, transparent. So all the people who have ever been with me, um, many of them know that I was been on the divorce court steps much sooner than he was. I'm always the one, I'm leaving you. He never ever told me that, I'm leaving you. But I always told him, oh, this is enough, I'm leaving you. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I believe that he's a multiple walk-in as well in order to stay with me and because he has grown with me. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think we would be together today if uh, he wouldn't have uh, had some and been open to to um, a walk-in experience or to grow spiritually with me. Um, so I would, I would exactly say what you did, Yvonne, about that it's been a blessing to my family and uh, to my grandchildren and certainly to my husband, which means it has helped our marriage um, to be um, our expanded self, my expanded self. I always tell people, how can it hurt the world to be your expanded <laughs> self. That's strong. more loving, more authentic. Yeah. yeah. I mean, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. let's create positive change. <laughs> Janice, you have mentioned that your son is an alien. Now, yes. is that like a walk in? Is there any similarities? Um, well, I believe he's, um, you know, I was told that through, uh, when he was uh, three years old, I went to a person who I appreciated and honored and respected because I've always had a teacher. And she told me immediately because he, uh, according to our world, would have been looked at as a oddball, a person who didn't sit, fit into our world and certainly did it, not sit, fit in with the other kids. Um, Joe can attest to that with special ed uh, students that many of them are star beings that just don't fit in with them. Perhaps can talk a little bit about that. And so I came, I was told to come home and um, welcome him into my life and to say, and thank you so much for choosing me, Joe, as your mother. And I know that you come from a different planet. <laughs> And you're a spatial being. Now, as an adult who is 34 years old, he told me, you know, mom, when you told me that, all I could think of is this icky, gooey stuff. That... <laughs> so, but, um, but yes, yes, he, he was very much. And I think that whether it's, uh, as Yvonne was saying, that she was almost diagnosed with bipolar. My husband told me at one point in our troubled marriage that, I, you know, I talked to somebody and I, Honey, I love you very much, and I think you need to go to a doctor because I think you're bipolar. <laughs> and, if, and if he ever saw bipolar, it was on the day that he told me that I was bipolar. Because <laughs> 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 I was ah, bipolar, <laughs> which I acted bipolar. Um, uh, but um, so, Joe and Ruth Ann, do you want to talk a little bit about the kids right now? But how about you thinking them perhaps being misdiagnosed or well i was just um as you were as yvonne was talking and as you were talking hope i believe our kids are star seeds in so many ways and um this change that's happening this time where we get to settle into our oneness and being in our homes with our families with our caregivers is um, helping our families to understand that as well, that they've got so much to offer and they're walking this earth. They look different than now than kids probably 10 years ago, even five years ago. And um, Joe was maybe one of those people that helped to lead the way with that too. So 
I don't know if Joe, you have some more things that you'd like to add to. I don't know. I just love working with all my little kids. I think because they had to, you know, I was so attracted to them, maybe because I, I felt like one of them. But, you know, again, what you were saying, Ruthann, it was the gifts they all brought. They may have not fit in with society or looked like everybody else, but none of us do. Again, you know, we're all one. I have this little funny thing that I've always said, you know, we had a zipper that started right up here and we unzipped this body that we're wearing right here on earth. We all, we're all the same. These are just costumes that we're wearing right now this time around. <clears throat> and that's what I think some of my little kids were. You know, you, if you could just look at and see that soul within, that's all we have to do. I miss them. That was a good time in my life but I have a good life now too. Yvonne, do you wanna talk about the star kids that are coming? <coughs> and, you know, I know Mary, you had a grand, was it a granddaughter that had some health issues? And um, so, and I always felt Mary that your um, grand, was it a granddaughter, Mary? Or grand granddaughter? Um, that, that I believe that was always a star child. So can you talk a little bit about the star seeds and the star children that are coming in and how, I don't know, how to treat them, how to help them, how to raise them, how to feed them? Do you want to mm -hmm. give some perspective on that or information on that? Well, that's a broad topic. And thankfully, yeah. <laughs> I do have a grandson who's 10 and he is ADHD with some dyslexia and dysgraphia. So he's behind is what we would consider the normal child and has been held back a grade uh, to help him grow up mature and what have you to fit in the mold. He is never going to fit in the mold because he is, he is, uh, has embodied the natal soul that was in my body at birth. He actually came in as me and there is a connection between me and that child that is just incredible. Um, there's an openness to him. He, when he was in second grade in public school, he was receiving some help from the, um, uh, the IP that he was in the program. And he had a, a, an aide that he would go out to sit with if he couldn't keep still and do all the things in class he was expected to do and couldn't do because of his executive function was just not able to allow him to keep up with that. And he would tell Miss Tiffany, who happened to be a friend of mine in the spiritual community, and we didn't even know that he, she was my grandson's aide, his special aide. But he was telling her things like, Miss Tiffany, your colors have changed today. Mm. He was seeing her aura. She says, well, what color are they? And he said, they used to be rainbow, but today they're pink and purple. She had done the meditation that morning with the colors of pink and purple. So mm. this is the kind of things that these kids can do. He says, but you haven't activated your colors. <laughs> Okay, he has not been around me enough to know that that I activate people or that that's even a word that a seven year old at the time would use in their vocabulary. And she says, well, how do you activate my colors? He goes, okay, they're activated. So he was using light language, pulse sound symbols, gesturing of light language and activated her colors. She felt a shift. That's the star seed in a child. They come in with these gifts and they know what to do with them. Yeah. We, we were watching Atlantis one day, the little kids movie. We got into it and nobody knew the language of Atlantis. And so they couldn't break the code. Da, da, da. Liam's sitting there and all of a sudden he shuts down the, well, no, he doesn't shut down anything. He just left. <laughs> Because that's the way that he did. He just ran out of the room. I'm like, where are you going? You're not going to watch the movie? Okay, fine. He comes back with a sheet of paper, and he has written star codes on the sheet of paper and hands them to me. He says, this is the language that they're looking for hmm. in Atlantis. I'm like, 
I don't know if this guy's just got a really good imagination, if he's been watching too many sci-fi kids movies or what, but he, he knows that. And there are kids, he's not just an isolated incident. There were other kids in that IP program that were coming to Miss Tiffany and she was sharing with me the same things coming from those children as well. There's a whole host of star seeds and children right now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you. How do we treat them? How do we feed them the best that we can? <laughs> They're advanced. <laughs> yes. yes. Yeah, because lots of times they're coming in with the allergies and stuff and, you know, gluten free and all that stuff. And I just think, well, they're trying to teach me how to eat gluten free. <laughs> you know? um, I think it's an individual thing. It's just, you know, their biology, what, what works for them, what works for their physiology. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what would you say to um, the star seeds that are coming in and women who are preparing to bring star seeds into the planet? What would you suggest for um, those who are bringing in uh, the new children upon our planet? We have two women on the panel um, who are going to bring forth um, star seeds and they're preparing their bodies for star seed children. What would you suggest? Well, I think it's just like any other pregnancy you would want to be as healthy as possible and, and watch what you eat and be careful and be conscious of that. Talking to the baby while it's still in the womb. I know I did that with both of my kids and uh, welcoming them and helping them to feel uh, adjusted because babies do pick up on the energy and the vibration in their environment, even before they're born, uh, especially of their closest relatives. They're being inside the mother's body. They probably pick up on everything. So just being kind to yourself will set the example. Um, the foods that I ate in my first pregnancy, that uh, my son, who's 40 now, still is the junk food diet because that's what I ate when I was pregnant with him. My daughter uh, is the health food uh, person and she cooks all these gourmet healthy meals for her family because that's how I ate when I was carrying her. So I think it does have a diff it does make a difference what you're eating. Um, and just trusting that you are birthing a teacher. <laughs> and you will learn a lot more from them than they will ever learn in their <laughs> in their education on earth because they're just mimicking facts and what have you when they when they go through the school system but uh, they have a wealth of knowledge and information to share with us i know i know we need to be concerned right now physically but i i see everything as energy 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 so if i have friends who are trying to conceive a child and uh, but they're told by their doctor who uh, doesn't understand perhaps energy. Is this a time that they should not try to get pregnant is, or is that just simply resonance that? Hmm. Well, I think a doctor can be put on the pedestal just like a spiritual guru and we give all of our power and authority away to them, believing their stories. And then we cancel out our own faith. If they're feeling like this is what they're supposed to be doing and they're supposed to be bringing in these children, then why let somebody else's opinion about that stop them from trying? That, that again, goes right back to following your own guidance. Yep. 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 Resonance, resonance, resonance. God, I, I loved it in Untamed. Um, sink in, sink down, slide down into your own knowingness during this fantastic sacred pause and opportunity that we have. It's an epidemic of knowing our true uh, knowledge right now. Knowing. So are there any last words, Yvonne? Uh, so wonderful. I mean, oh my God, you're, you're so great and so real. And that's why I love you. Oh, you're so sweet. Any last words you would like to give to this group? Um, no, I just love to hear from you. If you want to come on over to the website, we are one spirit.com, hit the contact button and send me an email. Maybe we'll do a free 15 minute get to know you and just chat a little bit. You got things you want to talk to me about privately. Thank, and what's your, what's your website again? We are one in spirit. Dot com. One in spirit. Dot com. And it doesn't we'll matter it in the spell O-N-E or the number. It, it'll get there either way. Janelle, did you have something? Yeah, I put um, Yvonne's website in the comments. So you thank guys you. can see it there. Yeah, thank you so much. Um, Yvonne. I know this is um, putting you on the spot, but would you say some light language for us? Oh, I'd love to. Thank you. It'd be an honor. Yeah. <sighs> Just kind of uh, let spirit choose how it will resonate with each of you and how you want to receive it. Gurama Shatul Karavale. 
Un don dan molle hikarato kalo rusa. Han de kilonda kilo sotava ela kiroto kormura vaka ashke. Hale om, hale om, haroto kormusha vaye ikara aki, harotola. May we be deliberate creators of a higher reality, steeped in love and peace. Constantly aware of our connection with Source and trusting our inner knowing to make decisions for each of us individually that is in our highest and best interest. And as the world is in this time of sacredness and in a shift, may we all rise to be all that we can be, our authentic self and embodying more spirit, even as we are allowing our personalities to be reparented retrained into a loving partnership with spirit and body. May the unifying process, oh, may the unification process, oh, and may it be brought to completion in the most peaceful and harmonious way for each and every one of us now. Oh, see oh, cool Oh, my heart is just so open and flowing to each and every one of you. Many, many blessings, many, many blessings. Take this blessing, this transmission, and let it work its magic in you and through you. Namaste. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Yvonne. I'm so mm -hmm. thankful. Thank you. So Thank you. An honor to be here. Yeah. And Yvonne will be on our um, summit. Um, oh. <laughs> our, uh, Yvonne will be on our summit uh, uh, that we will have uh, for our telecommunication. Um, so I thank you for being with that with us. I thank you for sharing your time because I know it's precious. I thank each and every one of you for being on uh, with us today and sharing all of your information and guidance and uh, settle in on the sacred pause and uh, don't try to leave the moment. Just be in the moment. Just be in the moment. So I thank you, Yvonne. Join us on Thursday. We're going to have fun on Thursday at four o'clock. We're going to play Name This Tune. Uh, every Monday we have a speaker and every Thursday we um, move that vibration up to a frequency of fun. And that's a vibration of I love that. And so. <laughs> Yeah. Take care. Thank you Thank so you. much, Yvonne. Thank, Thank you, everyone. You. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Love to all of you. Bye bye. Bye. We can hardly wait to see you in person, Yvonne. We are going to have to do that. <laughs> Janice, you, everybody. Mm -hmm. Um, I would. What was the name of the book you said you were reading? Was it Untamed? Yeah, Untamed by Glennon Doyle Nelson. Okay, thank you. And I don't know how much more untamed I can get, but I'm doing it. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great book. It's a great book. It's a great book. Okay, oh, have a wonderful evening. Have a wonderful evening. Oh, there, there it is right there. <laughs> oh, <thank you>. yeah. <laughs> Can't wait. That's right. Take care. I love you, everybody. Bye -bye. Hopefully we'll see you on Thursday. You Bye. Too, Thank you, Janelle and Amy, as always, for helping me with that. I couldn't do it without you. Oh, Anytime. So We're so fun. happy. Wasn't she great? Oh, my God. She was great. Thank you, everybody. <laughs> it was nice meeting you. Yeah. yeah. Thank you for being here, Ellen. Bye, Bye Nan. Bye, everybody. Bye. 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 You look beautiful and pink. Dan, you're glowing. Bye, you're glowing. Thank you. <laughs>